The word government, you break it down. People say this word every day almost, and yet they've never looked at the etymological roots of the word. It comes from the Latin verb gubernare. Once again, no V in classical Latin. No V, okay? So again, Vs were rendered as either Bs or Ps in classical Latin language. So the, the, you could write this in what would be more modern Latin as gubernare with a V. But in classical Latin or ancient Latin, there is no V. So it would have been rendered with a B, gubernare. Now, what's the election of a governor called? It's called a gubernatorial election. Gubernatorial. Gubernare is in there. Okay? Gubernare means to control. The verb gubernare in Latin means to control. The Latin noun mens, which is where the part, the second part of the word meant is derived from, means mind. Okay? So you put these together, and the word government actually literally, from its etym etymological roots, means to control the mind, or in other words, mind control. Now, I'm going to put something else up here for a moment. The etymological origin of the English suffix ment, M-E-N-T, is often debated in this etymological breakdown, all right? And I've gotten stuff about this constantly, and I've told people I'm not interested in hear about, hearing about it anymore. I know where this comes from. I know why the creators of the English language made it so, made it like this, okay? It is overwhelmingly clear by people who have studied linguistics and the origins of words, okay, in English from ancient languages, that the creators of the English language deliberately chose the Latin noun mens, meaning mind, to represent or mean in English the state of or the condition of. And this was done in direct keeping with the first principle of natural law, as we've already discussed, the principle of mentalism, which demonstrates that in order for any particular thing, event, or circumstance, any state or condition to exist in manifested reality, it as it currently does, the, which is known as the plane of effects, it must have first existed in the plane of causality or the mental realm, the mind. Okay? We've already looked at that principle of natural law. So anything that ends in meant, the original etymological derivation means that it was made that way first by a state of mind which led to its creation in physical reality. Okay? Any word you can think of that ends in M-E-N-T, meaning the state of or the condition of, means it happened in mind first, and therefore it led to the state of or the condition of in physical reality. Okay? So, when I say that government means mind control, it literally does, and that is an accurate etymological breakdown. Okay? The word mens was deliberately chosen for specific reasons. And I just explained the reason of that meaning, the state of or the condition of. And pe many people want to hotly contest that. I'm telling you outright they're wrong. They don't understand why that was chosen. Mens, meaning mind, was chosen deliberately to mean the state of or the condition of. Government is based on this illusory and false concept called authority. People think certain people are authorities, that they actually have rights that other people don't have. The right to command, compel, coerce, and tell people, this is right, this is what you're gonna do, and if you disagree, I have the power to actually co compel, coerce, or con constrain you against your will. If you're not har harming anybody, even in the taking of that action. Authority is based upon an equal illusion that is called jurisdiction. Now, if we break down this word, it comes from the Latin noun. Jurisdiction comes from Latin, jus juris. Jus juris in Latin means law. Juris is the possessive case. And the Latin verb dictare. So, jus dictare, juris dictare, jurisdiction. Okay? Dictare means to say or to speak. Thus, jurisdiction literally means to say what the law is. Or in other words, we get to make up what the law is. 
The law is not something that exists in nature and is based upon right and wrong and truth and morality. No, we get to make it up. We're God. We get to say what's right and what's wrong. And therefore, since we make the law, we're the owners of these people. We're, we're, they're, they're in our jurisdiction. You know, we own them. And we get to make up what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. Authority ultimately is an illusion, again, of a diseased mind, a diseased psyche, based entirely in violence and built upon the erroneous and dogmatic belief that some people are masters who have the moral right to issue commands and others are slaves who have a moral obligation to obey the commands of the masters. I don't care what you want to call it. You can euphemize it any way you want. I call it what it really is. Slavery. That's what it really is. It doesn't come down to anything else. You can call it whatever you want, euphemize it, try to make it sound as nice or as pleasant as possible. It's all one thing. It's called slavery. It's always immoral and it needs to be ended. That's it. And we have to develop the knowledge and the courage to end it. The knowledge, the care and the courage to end it. The belief in the legitimacy of, quote, authority, this illusory nonsense notion, is the belief in the legitimacy of slavery. Anybody who believes in that authority is legitimate and government is legitimate, whether they want to admit it or not, or know it or not, or understand it or not, I don't care what they believe. They are advocating the legitimacy of slavery. That's not my belief. Uh, you can call, I don't care who calls that my belief. I'm just looking right into the camera and saying this. Because I know the people in this room know that that's not my belief. I'm telling anybody who's listening to this, that's not my belief. That's eternal truth. Eternal truth. Okay? You believe in these concepts, you, you are a supporter of slavery. The end. That's how it really is. Not because I said so. Because that's how it really is. Okay? And that's called mind control. For somebody to believe that slavery is legitimate, you got to be under deep mind control. you got to be either that or a sick, psychopathic, absolute piece of garbage. Okay? One of those things or another is true if you believe in those concepts. And again, I'm not afraid to tell it to somebody right to their face like that. I don't care. I'm not here to serve truth, make friends, or be liked. I'm here to tell people what the truth... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not here to serve human beings, make friends, or be liked. I, I am here to serve the truth. Whether it will be accepted is not up to me. I'm doing what I'm charged to do by creation. Okay? Whether it's accepted is somebody else's karma, not mine. Ultimately, authority is the idea that man can become God and through, quote, jurisdiction, dictate the law. What the dark occultists of this world, who are behind ostensible governments in the world, you know, they set up all of these institutions as temples, right? What this sick psychopathic priest class ultimately believes is they're going to become God. We're going to turn natural law on top of its head and we're going to rule in hell. That's it. We're going to rule in hell. It's a religion. This is a religion. Hey, government's a religion. The concept of authority is a religion. People don't, most people don't see it that way. And I mean religion in the term of false religion. Okay? It's, it comes from the Latin religare. I laugh when I hear people say it comes from religare. Or, or relegare, R-E-L-E-G-A-R-E, or relegare, okay? Which means to read over again. To go back over something that you've already read and read it again. It's the most ridiculous, nonsensical derivation I've ever heard for the word religion. To reread. I mean, please, let's put this to bed, folks. Government, uh, religion does not mean to reread. It doesn't come from re relegare or relegare. I can't remember which infinitive is used for that verb offhand, but um, it comes from religare, hence religion, R E L I G A R E. All right? Religare means to tie back, 
to hold back or to thwart from forward progress by tying or binding. Tying up so that you can't move forward. That's what religare is, and that is the etymological root of religion. Because a false religion is a system of control that is based in unchallenged dogmatic belief which keeps the mind in a prison in order to hold back the progress of consciousness. And that's where the bulk of humanity is at, in a brain cage. They're in the, the mind cage, okay? There is a positive connotation of religion. It also means to reunite with. And what we need to reunite ourselves with is the truth and common sense and natural law and a knowledge that there's no such thing as, legitimacy, as legitimacy to slavery. That's what we need to reunite with, you know? And then we'd be living with true religion. We'd be practicing true religion instead of fake religion. We've got to stop trying to make our religion truth. And we got to start making truth our religion. That's what needs to be done.